Welcome back. Um, in the last video, we defeated Tulip, the psychic trainer. And now you notice we're back at the school. Yeah, because uh, we've got classes to do. Good morning, Master Odd. What class would you like to take? All of them. <laughs> Biology with Mr. Jacques? Yeah, sure. Whatever. It's cool, I guess. You hear that Momo? She told me not to be late. You believe that? <laughs> I'm never late. I am, Ashley. I am. I'm really late all the time. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. You all did really great on the midterm exam. I was right the last time was midterms. Forgot about that. Thanks for answering my little question at the end, too. I'll be sure to keep your responses in mind. Alright, we're now heading into the last half of our classes together. It's time for our knowledge to evolve and grow, just like our Pokemon. Evolution. Yep, haha. <laughs> evolution. Today we're going to learn about the fascinating phenomenon of Pokemon evolution. <coughs> I feel like that's a line Oak says. As your Pokemon battle and level up, they learn moves and get stronger. And for some Pokemon, once they've leveled up enough, their appearances change and their stats increase. Sometimes by a lot. That's Pokemon Evolution. I'm aware, sometimes they don't. Pokemon become st very strong when they evolve, making them trusty partners in battle. But some people prefer to keep their Pokemon in their adorable pre-evolved states. Ash, I'm joking, Pokemon that Pikachu refused to evolve. To do this, you just need to remember a certain button when your Pokemon begins to evolve, or just give it an Everstone, pretty sure, right? Everstone's one that prevents it from evolving. Say it with me if you already know. To cancel evolution, press, then B. That's right, everyone. B for best answer. The button you want when you need to stop Pokemon from evolving is the B button. If you press this button soon after a Pokemon begins to evolve, you can stop it from changing. You can also let the Pokemon hold an item known as Everstone to keep it from evolving. And keep in mind that the requirements for evolution differ from Pokemon to Pokemon. Some may evolve by having a certain item, such as a Firestone or Thunderstone used it on. Others may have to learn a specific move to defeat Pokemon in battle. The way Primeape evolves into a Nidalee is especially strange. You see, there's a certain move that... Oh, whoops! Sorry, looks like we're out of time! I guess we'll have to end the class here there today. Thank you all for your attention. You're not even gonna finish? Your thought, bud? I don't have an Annihilate. Tell me your secrets. Biology 5. Yes, I would like Biology 5 with Mr. Jacques. Let me finish Mr. Jacques's classes, alright? I want to get this out of the way. I'm a good student. Um, what are we learning today, Professor Jacques? Hello, hello, I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. But before we get going, do you all remember the final question from our midterm exam? Well, Director Clavel found out about it somehow, and I got yelled at. Whoops. Apparently, he could tell I was hiding something just by looking at me. You must have noticed all the color flush right out of my face. Haha. <laughs> Speaking of color, today I'd like to teach you all about colors as they pertain to Pokemon. Some Pokemon have slightly different coloration or pattern, other bodies based on their gender or individual differences. In very rare cases, a Pokemon may have widely different coloration compared to the others of the same species. We call this Pokemon Shiny Pokemon. Sometimes those Shiny Pokemon aren't all that quite different from the original Pokemon. Sometimes they're not different at all, it seems. It is quite rare to cross paths with one. Does anyone here know what the likelihood of funding a shiny Pokemon is? Uh, one of 4,000? Wow, that's right. You may have the makings of a Pokemon, Professor Odd. Shiny Pokemon will appear at the rate of 1 in 4,000. Isn't that amazing? The probability of encountering one in the wild is the same as hatching one from an egg, too. Eggs from a pair of Pokemon raised around different languages are used in a special case. There is a higher than average chance that a shiny Pokemon will hatch from these eggs. But we haven't been able to figure out why that is just yet. I've also heard rumors of a charm that increases your likelihood of finding shiny Pokemon when you have it in your bag. Can you believe that? This claim can't be scientifically verified, 
But it sure would be fun if it were true. Says the guy who probably has a shiny charm. Whoops, there's the bell. That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. I'm on to you, Jijak. I said Clive Clavel, but that was that would be wrong. Those are two different people. What would it be? Oh, I can do six. Yeah, maybe there's more classes than I thought. Oh no. <laughs> Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. This is gonna get repetitive, but yeah, yeah whatever. You just gotta get into character, man. Hello, hello, I hope everybody's ready to learn some new things today. Next time we meet, we'll have our final exam. That means today is our last actual class. And the topic for this last class will be Pokemon forms. You can just think of a forms as the shape or appearance that Pokemon have. There's also a phenomenon called a form change, where a Pokemon's appearance changes under certain conditions. Yeah, I've got one. Cyclosa, for example, which we regularly ride on as transportation here in Paldea, has three forms. First is Bix's form, where it walks on four legs. Second is its battle form, where it stands on its hind legs to engage in battle. Finally, there's its ride form, when it inflates its throat sacs and its tail, so we can ride on its back. Though we can something, so we can use something you're all carrying with you now as an even better example. Yep, I'm talking about your phones. Some smartphones are inhabited by a certain Pokemon. Does anyone know what the Pokemon I'm referring to is? Rotom? You're a regular expert on Pokemon and technology, aren't you, Odd? The Pokemon inside your smartphone is Rotom, and it does all sorts of things to help you out. A Rotom inside a Rotom phone is special, so it doesn't try to enter other electronics. An ordinary Rotom, however, can change form by entering a washing machine, microwave ovens, and other electronic appliances, such as a fan. Rotom is a bit of an exception, though. Many Pokemon that change forms do so simply by holding an item or by having one used on them. Oricoro, for example, has four different forms it can change between when given certain nectars. Pokemon may even change type or learn different moves when they change forms. Form changes are different from evolution in that these Pokemon can return to its original form. And unlike shiny Pokemon, which can't change their special coloration, the same individual Pokemon can go back and forth between its forms. There's a lot to dig in with this form change phenomenon, as you can see. We can all learn something from Pokemon here, don't you think? Bit of a stretch, but... I'd be happy to see you all enjoy your time at the academy to the fullest and change form into a new version of yourselves. How inspirational. Or something like that anyway. Oh, I almost forgot! Regional forms, which vary based on what regional Pokemon came from, don't change like others. Forms. They're an innate... Yeah, that's it. Whoops, there's the bell. I guess I was scatterbrained, Mr. Jacques, right up to the very end, huh? I had a great time teaching you, all of you. I hope you'll do best on your final exam. Is that, like, are we there? Like, is that, just like the final, can we take the final exam? Or do I have to beat the last gym leader? Because I have one Titan, one gym, and two uh, bases left. I can take the biology final, I guess, but we're just going to go to the other ones. First, and then do the final ones last. Um, in fact, I think I'll just do. I'll finish everything up till the finals, and then I'll do the finals in like a separate episode. Because I think after I go through all of these, I'll just do like uh, probably one of the bases or the last gym. Hello, everyone. Well done on the midterm exam. Some of you are in perfect scores, and others seem to have a bit of trouble. But I can tell that you all tried your best. I am quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume that this means you have all come to love numbers. No, 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 not at all. Stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know how that word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. A Pokemon's stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? Yeah. For example, if a Pokemon uses the move Work Up, its attack and special attack stats will rise by one stage each. And as you may know, each time a Pokemon's attack or a special attack rises at one stage, moves affected by that stat will deal 50% more damage. If the same Pokemon from what our previous example were to use Work Up again, both its attack and special attack will have risen by two stages total. This results in a 100% increase to damage dealt, making its moves twice as strong. 
Swords Dance, on the other hand, boosts attack by two stages at once, allowing the Pokemon to deal double damage after just a single use. Using Swords Dance twice would boost the Pokemon's attack stat by four stages. How much more damage then would this Pokemon deal? Quadruple? Ah, oh, yes, this question is a what? But you said twice. So they used it twice. Bro, I hate math. Rose drastically. I have never seen drastically used when using any move. I don't ever use those X drugs, man. Well, you threw a trick question at me. What the hell do you expect? Nobody likes math, you dumb bimbo. My god. Somebody said Mrs. Time was the best teacher. They must be a math person, man. Because there's no way... In, like, the same person who said Mrs. Time was the best teacher also said Mr. Salvatore was the worst teacher. How? I don't understand that one. How can you say Mrs. Time is the best teacher and Salvatore is the worst? Like, in terms of, like, like, the character themselves, you know, not, like, their teaching ability. Like, no, Time's just... I don't know, Time's not, like, an interesting character. Like, she's got a cool design. I like her design and everything. Uh, in order to stay sharp. I know it was a little difficult with all the talk of multiplication precision to be like that, but, today, yeah, I thought you I thought you used it twice, so therefore you went up to four stages, which would be quadruple the damage, wouldn't it? hurt my brain to learn about probability do I deal with probability probably <laughs> Pokemon moves generally have a property called accuracy which determines the probability that it, they will hit yeah that accuracy of tackle is a hundred or hundred percent so if you were to use tackle a hundred times you would, could expect it to hit all 100 times Move Hypnosis, which puts opponents to sleep, has an accuracy of 60 or 60%. That means you could have expected to hit 60 times in 100 uses. To put it, to put that another way, out of 100 uses, you could expect it to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy or just lower PP and or debuff you drastically. So when you're deciding whether to go slow and steady with moves that are sure to hit or hard and fast with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. I just go with uh, reliable strong moves, like moves that are like 90-100 or 80-100 or 80-90, stuff like that. Let me see here. Perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump would be good examples for this discussion. Surf has a power of 90 and its access is 100, meaning you expect to hit it every time. It's 80, but when it hits, its power is 110. So between Surf and Hydro Pump, which move would you want to use yourselves? Surf? For me? I mean... Surf is a very powerful move. It is not mediocre. It is not a 60 power, it's not a 40, like it's a 90 dude. Hydro Pump does 20 more damage with 5 less PP usage and a 20% more chance to miss. I can use Surf more and hit harder con more consistently. So yeah, Surf. Yeah, this is what factor like... Factors like PP and number of targets hit may make some moves suited to... Yeah. Yeah. Surf has more PP usage than your boy Hydro Pump. And it's a horde killer. Trust me. 
I've grinded many of Pokemon to level 100 in the Kalos region on my Pokemon Y version with Surf via Greninja and Samurai and various other, like I think uh, Suicune was another one I used. However, trading accuracy for power or vice versa is purely a matter of preference. This Surf vs. Hydro Pump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. There's no debate. Personally, I'm more invested in debating the rock type moves, rock slide, and stone edge, which have terrible accuracy, but that's rock moves for you. Let me tell you, I could really get worked up talking about those moves, but oh my, there's the bell. What a shame. Next class will be the last time, so make sure 100% ready to go. That way, you know, you're ready to go 100 out of 100 times you were going to take the class. Probably. My brain hurts. <laughs> Math 6, please. Should have done this first. Get it out of the way with, man. Would have been best for my brain. It hurts, dude. <gasps> Hello, everyone. I hope we can have fun once again. There's no fun to be had in your class, Mrs. Time. Or Ms. Time, whatever. I don't know if you're married or not. You look like you would be married. The last time we learned about probability using move accuracy as an example, probability is quite an interesting subject. Did you know that in cl a class with 40 students, there's a 90% chance that two of them will have the same birthday? What do you mean 90%? That seems a bit high. This is true even despite the fact that there are over 300 days each year. Isn't that remarkable? It seems a bit far-fetched to me. It seems like there seems like somebody at Nintendo got the wrong information. But let's move on to today's topic before we get swept up along with probability again. I've been teaching you all how to calculate damage in this class using examples like type matchups, critical hits, stat boost, and the likes. All of these variables are multiplied together to calculate damage dealt to an opponent. However, did you know that there is an even simpler simpler way to increase the damage of your Pokemon's moves? All you have to do is have your Pokemon use a move it shares with a type. Shares a type with. So water using a water type. If a rock type Pokemon uses a rock type move stone edge, the power the moves pace power of 100 is multiplied by 1.5 to become 150. Ground and rock may seem like similar types, but if a ground type Pokemon uses Stone Edge, the move's power will remain 100. Super effective moves and critical hits also add multiplier to the little numerical increase, so it's most certainly must not be taken lightly. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand what I'm talking about here. Say you have a move with a power of 100 if a Pokemon that shares a type with this move uses it and hits an opponent that is weak to that type what happens to the move's power? Wouldn't it become 200? Because it's doubled? Right? Oh, it's doubled. So that would be 300? Okay. If I remember correctly if you hit a Pokemon with its weakness, then it's doubled. She just said that 150 would be a 100 base stat move power level of a Pokemon using that move with its same typing. So a water uses Surf, it's doubled, right? No, it's times 1.5, so yeah, it'd be like 140. So would this be 300 then if it's doubled? I did and I struggled it. My brain hurts, but I got it right, so I was right. First, using a move that shares this type with this user multiplies above base stat by 1.5, making the power 1.5 or 150. The fact that the poem is weak to the moves then doubles that power from 150 to 300. The original power of the move ends up being tripled. Isn't that amazing? And she's jumping for joy. Now that's what's more, if a Pokemon terrestrializes and its Terra type matches one of its original type, then the bonus it gets for using that move Using a move of that same type increases from 1.5 to 2. Of course, being able to use a lot of different moves with different types is great as well. That's one way you can surprise your opponent. So if you Terra, your 1.5 goes to 2. So your 100 would be 200, and then if you, your opponent's weak to it, then it'd be 400. In the end, your own innate characteristics are what will really let you shine the most. Bear in mind that this is true for both humans and Pokemon. 
It sure would make me happy if you could take those words to heart. But I suppose I really, sh I really should have shared this basic advice from our first lesson. My apologies. And just like that, the class is over. The last of our time together flew by in the blink of an eye. It was so much fun to be able to teach all of you eager students about numbers. I wasn't as eager as you were. Next class will be our fun final exam. Not really fun. Be sure to review the material well in preparation. I'll forget it. Because that's just the student I am. Time. I got time for your nonsense. Uh, I wasn't interested in that one, but I kind of had to take it. Oh, right. You know what? Let's do... Let's do home ec. With Mrs. Saguero. Mr. Saguero. <laughs> I said Mrs. Sa I did say Mrs. Saguero. Whew. I don't know, who knows, I might end it after Saguero, you know, 21 minutes, decently. What's up, Mr. Saguero? Put away your phones, it's time to begin class. Though some of you had to retake the midterm exam multiple times, I'm glad to say that the majority of the class passed without issue. I feel honored to see that the knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life have taken root in all of you. I trust that you will work just as hard on your life skills and in the second half of the course as well. Let us now turn our attention to the topic of the day which was inspired by a question I received on the subject of meal powers. The student who asked this question is a young man who enjoys the culinary arts. He tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own and pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. Yet despite this, he is baffled by his inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. So tell me, Master Rod, since you did quite well in your midterm exam, what should... <coughs> <coughs> Did this young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal power? Arvin, you were about to say Arvin, weren't you? You should make food more often. <laughs> oh, I love that. Arvin? Not yet. He should make food with other people. I guessed. Sorry. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, actually, I used a uh, process of elimination. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwich must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult, but if you prepare a sandwich with others, you'll be able to handle a larger serving of bread. With a larger base to start with, it becomes quite simple to add more ingredients to your sandwich, which in turn makes it possible to receive meal powers of increased effectiveness. This applies more broadly as well when dealing with a uh, difficult issue, working with others to solve that issue may be the best course of action. I'm sure that Arvin will likewise work with friends to craft the sandwiches in the future. You just said that out loud, Teach. <clears throat> the identity of the male student is a matter of privacy, so I would ask that you do not pry too deeply. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. It's okay. Arvin's, I'm already Arvin's sidekick in all this giant mess, so... Uh, you have no fear. I mean, you got nothing to fear from. From me. Your secret's safe with me. Because I'm the one he's working with. Man. You like home ec with Mr. Squ Mr. Suguero? I mean, it's alright. I think it's the one I struggle with the most outside of math. Just because it's the weirdest one. Like math, I just suck at math. But home act, man? I, I don't know. It's just all over the place for me. Ooh, put away your phones. While you're out performing field work with one of your Pokemon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed changes in its coloration? No. Now, I don't mean that it suddenly becomes a shiny Pokemon or any nonsense like that. I'm speaking of it becoming filthy. Pokemon battle. They get hurt by moves used against them. They get battered by wind and rain. They get covered in sand and mud. They get, in a word, filthy. I have seen many a trainer walking about with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing this issue. It is deplorable. Let me ask this question of someone who I am sure would not tolerate such shameful conduct. He says as he's staring me down.
down the eye. Ah, uh, yes, Master Rod. Did you not ask anybody else? Wait, is that Arvin in front of me? What should you do if your Pokemon is dirty? Pat it on the head. Nothing. Clean it up. Perfectly correct. I knew that. How do I? Miss, how am I supposed to clean it? When your Pokemon are dirty, clean them. This is, of course, simple common sense. While you are having a picnic, you can approach the Pokemon on your team and perform a variety of actions. I did not know this. Once this action is putting them through what I like to call the Pokemon Wash. In other words, you are able to clean them up. You start by getting your sponge lathered up with soapy bubbles as you gently and carefully scrub your Pokemon. Once your Pokemon is nice and covered in soapy bubbles, the bubbles will encapsulate the filth, then you simply wash it away with spray water. This will get your Pokemon clean and shining bright as a Terra Jewel. It is certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore HP and cure status conditions. However, some Pokemon may have parts in their bodies that they don't want scrubbed or that they would rather not get wet. Be sure to keep this in mind when cleaning your Pokemon. Now, the most important point that I must mention is that some Pokemon like to be dirty. Though I will contradict myself by saying this, please do remember that cleaning your Pokemon is not always the kind of thing to do. What? You tell me I can't clean my rubbish? My trubbish? My Garbodor? <sighs> Muck? I bid you for a while. Man. I've been cleaning muck this entire time and he hated it. You're telling me muck's hated me this entire time and I didn't even know it? What class would you like to take? My last home ec class, please. Well, my last normal one. Let's suck one out of please. I want to see my big muscular man who teaches me how to handle life. None of these other teachers do that. They just teach me how to battle. Every job he teaches me how to research. Man, you always assume I have my phone tap. Is the study of life necessities, but looking back on our time together, I realized that I focused almost entirely on food. I hope it is not too late to shift to a discussion of clothing. As I'm sure you are aware, our academy has an air of freedom about it. We provide uniform for each season to accommodate the diverse climate of Paldea. However, students are free to wear whichever style they wish whenever they please. You should all have received four sets of tops and bottoms, one for each spring, summer, fall, and winter when the academy has accepted you. If by chance you were not aware of this, you may wish to pursue your wardrobe. As long as you wear our school uniform, the rest of the ensemble need not be school issued. This includes your bag and your hat. If you choose to wear one, you're free to style your hair however you wish. Mr. Salvatore's hairstyle, for example, would almost certainly have been against school rules when I was a boy. That reminds me, there's one thing you all like to decorate, which I must say I find quite charming. <gasps> Rotoms. Perfectly wrecked. I must admit that I'm fascinated by Rotom phones and how to customize them. What's that? How very intriguing. So there's a shop called Delibird Presents, where you can purchase cases for your Rotom phones? I thank you for that useful bit of information. I shall have to go myself first thing tomorrow to get an adorable case of my own liking. Forgive me. I seem to have gotten a little carried away with the small task. Talk. Not task. <clears throat> as this class knows, known as home economics near its end, I offer these final words to you who have been honing every day's life skills with me. My field of study is not so decisive as the likes of mathematics, for instance where test scores might play a part in deciding your future. However, as you go on to cook for yourselves, take care of your Pokemon to decide what to wear in the morning when you we when you awaken. <laughs> when you weaken. I would be honored if that I would be honored if what I have taught you serves to smoothen out and enrich your lives. Even if only a little. The sentiment was imparted to me by Mr. Hassel and his particular outlook on such matters. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for seeing this class through to the end. Our time together has come to a close for today. Prepare to do your best on our final exam. 
I gotta say I love you, man. So great. So cool. I do not like Swagger. He's just cool. So we have history, language, battle studies, and art. I think we'll do art. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with art. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. <laughs> Whatever, teach. Like, I'm ever tardy. <laughs> Get a load of this one. Jeez. Jeez. Get a load. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. I don't know. When I see him, I get the vibe of... Uh... Oh, my goodness. What is his name? Lockhart. Professor Lockhart. Did every... Did very well in the midterm. As a reward for all your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Brassy, please come in. Greetings. Ooh. Oh, it's Brassius. I'm an artist, and I focus exclusively on grass-type Pokemon for my work. Yeah, I, I already trounced you. Loved your challenge, by the way. Brassy is here mainly creates three-dimensional pieces, such as statues and the likes. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrounding Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who've challenged the Artisan gem are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. Hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's class. Old Haas is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Haas that I was able to establish my current art style. Ah, dear Brassi. I have nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hope you will guide this class in a way only you can. Of course. Let's see. Why don't we discuss what Haas mentioned surrounding the sun floor? Can anyone here tell what mood was was when I crafted Oh, what my mood was when I crafted its detached expression? To be honest, I do not remember what it looks like. But via the word detached makes me sad, makes me think sad or angry. No, no, no. Completely and utterly wrong. To be fair, I don't I don't remember what it looks like. So you were angry? I'd resolve to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Hence, then I was surrendering. That's exactly it, House. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill. And fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. Only about what would sell. I was concerned with only with fame and fortune. But all my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Haas. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details. But in the end, I was able to leave all that behind. And that was also when I crafted the Sunflora. So you were happy? This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they're so close to you. Now I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with words. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all for me. I must admit, I'm beginning to feel a bit embarrassed. So I bid you farewell, Haas. And farewell to your peoples as well. So what was the answer? Ah, Brassy. I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank. Thank you so much. <laughs> so what was the answer? I don't... 